Well, Teresa, what did you think of your first ballet? Oh, I loved it. Such a beautiful story. Even though Cinderella is poor, Prince Charming still falls in love with her and marries her. That it's just a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale, Teresa. It's real. I realize that tonight being with you. Is it? I've fallen in love with you, Teresa. We watch that train <gasps> smush charity. Bye bye. Oh, Jimmy doesn't want to be around for the smush part. Jimmy thinks King and Calibus should just drop her and run. No way. She's not going to go anywhere. She's knocked out from the injection you gave her. We're staying put until the deed is done. Now pick up a beat. But Jimmy will miss the way. He'll be missing more than that if I sit fluffy on him. One of these days, Jimmy's going to get fucking injected. What did you say, Timmy? Nothing. Timmy still doesn't know why Caliber has to stay in watch. Because I have to see with my own two eyes that the world is rid of little Miss Charity. And I can't take the chance of someone racing in at the last minute to save her. Now move it. Up, up, up. much you got into it. I love stories with a happy ending. Did Cinderella's happy ending give you hope that you'll have a happy ending with your own Prince Charming? Excuse me? The wealthy guy you told me you're in love with. 
The one who has such a different background from your own. Yes. It has given me hope. Good. A person's background should never be an obstacle. The love two people have for each other is the only thing that matters. I hope so. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed your first ballet. Oh, I did, Ethan. This has been the most wonderful night of my life. A dream come true. Thank you so much, Ethan. I'll never forget this evening. Don't thank me yet. The evening isn't over. Forget it, he's long gone by now. We really showed him, didn't we? Don't think twice about jumping Sheridan Crane again. No, thanks to you, he jumped somebody else. What? But if you could just stayed out of it and not knock me over the head with that bottle, I would have gone up. I would have arrested that guy. It was an accident. Yeah, well, no thanks to you. The mugger got away. You screwed everything up. As usual. Capital punishment. Getting hit by a train isn't capital punishment. Now pick up a beat. Oh, come on. We've got to get this heretic onto the tracks before the train gets here. Oh. Miguel. Miguel. He's dead. Oh, my fault. Oh, my fault. What have I done? What have I done? Hey. Miguel? Miguel, you're alive? Oh, yeah, I just took the wind knocked out of me when I fell off the bike. Oh, you're all right. You're all right. You okay? I can be better. Good. I don't know what happened. I mean, I know it was an old tire, but... I just checked it last week, and it seemed to have plenty of tread on it. I'm going to check it out. Well, uh, like you said, it was an old tire. Yeah, but it shouldn't have blown out that way. Something must have happened to it. It's not important. Sure it is. Wait a minute. What's this? I see what happened. The tire didn't blow out. It was punctured. Yet? No, I'm not sure tired, Teresa. And I could take you home. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm not tired. Um, not a bit. In fact, I've never felt less tired in my life. <laughs> Good. Then would you like to go to a private party? Private party? Yes. Where? Uh, it's on the stage. The uh, theater society members are having a private party, and the ballet company will be there. Dancers will be there. That's right. You can meet them if you like. Really? Can I talk to them? Sure. What would I say? I... Well, tell them how much you enjoyed the ballet. Okay. But I have to warn you, some of the members of the theater society are, well, stuffy. So if you don't want to go. Don't want to go? I have dreamed all my life about going to a party like this. You have? Oh, yeah. I've seen pictures in magazines. Everyone dressed up, the women in beautiful gowns, men in tuxedos. Everyone looking so sophisticated, so glamorous. I don't know if I'd fit in. Not only will you fit in, I think you'd be the hit of the party. Do you really? Absolutely. You know, I dread these affairs, but I've had a lot of fun tonight. Thanks to you. Me? Yeah. Yes. I take a lot of things for granted, like seeing this ballet. But tonight was your first ballet, and seeing it through your eyes and 
how you experienced it? Well, it brought back the magic. It made it fun. And I think going to this party is going to be fun, too. Because I'll be seeing it through your eyes. Shall we? I, uh, I just have to get my things. Okay. idea knocking me out. Well, obviously I was aiming for the mugger. Well, you've got lousy aim. Well, you were moving around. I was me. trying to apprehend the mugger. I know. I told you to stay out of it, didn't I? I was only trying to help. And I didn't need your help. Yeah. I had that situation under control without you. Well, I'm sorry. Where are you going? Go on, look for the guy. Long gone by now. You should have that cut looked at. I'm fine. Louise? I said I'm fine. Look, my car's parked down the way. I'm taking you to the hospital. No. You could have a concussion. I don't you have a... You need to see a doctor. I'm not going to the hospital. If I go to the hospital, I'll have to fill out a report. And there's no way I'm telling them that some woman hit me in the head with a beer ball. Some woman? I can't believe how much of... Is it... It has nothing to do with that. Just, it's going to look like I messed up trying to apprehend that perp. I'll explain what happened. I don't need you to explain anything, and I, I don't need your help. Look, I am not letting you drive like this. If you won't let me take you to a doctor, then at least let me drive you home. Well, thanks. I've seen the way you drive. Oh, you can be so pig-headed and stubborn. Good night. I don't want to hear another word. I'm driving. No, you're not. Not another word. This puncture wasn't here the last time I checked his tire. I know what happened. Miguel, I... I must have driven over a nail in the road. Yeah, that must be it. You sure you're okay? Yes. You look a little pale. You're trembling. I am. You must have been so scared when the bike started going out in that skid. Yeah, I'm, I was. I mean, I've been in skids before. I, I know how to handle them. She must be really shaken up. I thought we were going to die. Okay. I'm so sorry. Just like they always say, you know, your whole life flashes before your eyes. She made me realize that there's so much that I haven't done. So much that I've missed out on, like going to Europe and getting my driver's license and being kissed by the boy I love. Love? Yes. And to think that I would die without ever knowing the feel of the lips of the boy I love on mine. The feel of true love's first kiss. I didn't know that's how you felt, Kay. Yeah, I feel it. Intensely. I'll make sure you get that kiss. Of course. Oh, my God. You came this close to hitting that truck. Well, I didn't. Besides, he cut me off. Well, where'd you learn to drive? Any 500? Oh, did you hire some race car driver to teach you? I got us here in one piece, didn't I? Barely. Ow. Sorry. Must have put too much alcohol yeah, no on it. Yeah, no kidding. Look, I can do this myself. Why don't you go home? No. I caused it. I'll take care of it. Well, stop trying to kill me in the process. Better? A little. Now hold still. Let me get a look at this wound. <sighs> uh, it's just a small cut, but we're going to have quite a goose egg. What are you doing? Help stop the stinging. Look, look, I'm fine. It's okay. Look, I'm really sorry about knocking you out. I was only trying to help. Well, I didn't need your help, okay? You know, why can't you just accept my apology? It was an accident. You'll live. It was no big deal. 
a big deal to me. I needed that arrest. Oh, yeah. So you go strutting around the station bragging about what a big macho man you are? No, I'm trying to make detective. But getting that arrest would have gotten me one step closer. Oh. Making detective that important to you? That's important. But not just for myself, for my family. I mean, detective means an extra hundred dollars a week. You're getting all worked up over an extra hundred dollars a week? Oh, I know. An extra hundred dollars a week doesn't sound like much to a billionaire's daughter like you. But to me and my family, that means a lot. You know, it means being able to keep the heat on a little longer during the night at winter. It means not having to skimp on groceries so you can afford to pay your mortgage. I mean, do you even know how a mortgage works? No. No, you wouldn't, would you? I mean, how could you? Rich people like you, you don't even know how the other half lives. You don't know what it's like living from paycheck to paycheck, worrying about what you'll do if you lose your job because you have little or no savings to pay your bills, or how you'll keep your home if your mortgage rates go up. Nah, <laughs> you're too busy worrying about getting the best seats at the opera or trying to decide which color your next sports car will be. Well, a good person like my mother rides the bus to work her fingers to the bone to work at the Crane Mansion because I can't even afford to buy her a second-hand car. I had no idea. How could you? I mean, people like you, you, you haven't a clue what it's like to struggle. And you couldn't care less about the people who do. But I never dreamed I'd see them in person, much less be at the same party with them. Well, how do they compare to the pictures? To be honest, some of them look a lot shorter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Miss Mr. and Mrs. George G. Dunlap. He's the big real estate developer. <laughs> yes, I know. How do you know them? Well, they're always at these affairs. There was a picture of them in last month's town and city. I read that she just came back from Paris where she went to all the fashion shows. I saw a picture of her sitting right in the front row. <sighs> she wears the most fabulous clothes. Would you like to meet them? Oh, no. I, I wouldn't know what to say. I think it's something you're heading this way. How are you, Ethan? Just yeah. fine, George. Boring ballet, wasn't it? <laughs> Actually, I rather enjoyed it. Priscilla, you're looking beautiful as usual. Oh, why, thank you, Ethan. <laughs> May I introduce my friend, Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald? Pleased to meet you, Miss Lopez Fitzgerald. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Dunlap. Oh, Mrs. Dunlap. <laughs> yes. Where's that lovely Gwen, Ethan? Such a darling girl. Uh, yes, she is. Uh, she's at work. Teresa was kind enough to accompany me. Teresa is my mother's new personal assistant. Oh, you're the girl Ivy's been raving about. She has? Yes, she said she couldn't get by without you. <laughs> Lovely gown. Thank you. So is George. That's Picasso, isn't it? Yes, as a matter of fact, I, I picked it up in Paris last week at the Spring Collection. I'm spending my money. <laughs> oh, it suits you perfectly. Why, thank you. <laughs> this year's collection was just incredible. The lines are much softer, more fluid than last year's. I agree. I especially liked the Chanel show, didn't you? Oh, a classic look. I'm surprised we didn't run into each other. I, I was right down in front. Where were you seated? Um, uh, me? My mother's quite impressed with Teresa's sense of style. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so, tell me, Teresa, what is your opinion of the new colors this year? Oh, fabulous. Especially hot pink. It would look great on you. Are you sure? Oh, it's your coloring, absolutely. Lovely girl, Teresa. Yes, isn't she? I don't know. Hot pink, huh? I'll make sure you get that kiss once we get back to Harmony. Harmony? Sure, I'll talk to Reese, get him to take you out more. Reese? Yeah. Now, I know what it's like to have special feelings for someone. I feel the same way about Charity. That's why I'm so desperate to find her. You know, I'm worried about her. She never should have left the hospital. But don't you worry. I'll make sure you get that kiss. We better get going. You're sure you're okay? Fine. I know you want to find Charity, too, but if you're hurt, say so. I mean, I can go get help. 
Even if it means putting off looking for charity. I wouldn't want to put off looking for charity. Oh! What's wrong, Kay? Oh, my leg. Can you put any weight on it? I can't move it. I didn't notice until I tried to stand up. Sorry. No, that's okay. You should lie down. Let me help you. Okay, you can let go now. I wish we had a cell phone so I could call for help. Do you have yours? Oh, darn, I forgot it. There's got to be a house around where I can make a call. Don't move. I'll be back as soon as I can. I'm with Miguel right now, and he chose me over Charity. Hurry, Timmy, hurry! The train's almost here! Hurry, hurry! legs of yours. Charity would be lying on the tracks right now and off to join her dear dead mother face. Yes. I'm sorry. <sighs> but look at the bright side, Princess. What bright side? Um, I mean, you have no idea. Yeah, well, because there isn't any bright side. I've just lost my best chance of, 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 of rigging the world of Charity's infernal goodness. What am I going to do now? Timmy's going to get rubbed out if he doesn't stop whining. I can't believe we missed that train. Now what, Tabitha? We could have found another way to get rid of her. Poor Terry. She looks so innocent. Innocent? Huh? Let me tell you, Tim Tim, that innocent girl has the power to obliterate our world. Can you find that hard to believe? Oh, does he indeed? Listen to me, Don Fain. For 300 years, the dark forces have feared this girl's arrival. All the legends foretold of her coming and of the powers she will possess. Her mother face had powers. And her aunt, Goody Goody Grace Bennett, she has them too. Well, at least I was able to keep them at bay by keeping them apart for all these years. Tell the... It's so bad. <laughs> Together, their powers would have been strong. But nothing compared to Charity's. She's the one thing that could bring an end to all the evil. But she doesn't know she has powers. Maybe Talitha doesn't have children. Maybe that's why Talitha and Timmy missed the train. It was a sign. No, we can't take that chance, Timmy. It was foretold that Charity would become aware of her powers when she became a woman. Lucky for us, she didn't have a boy in her life. But she has. That boy? What's his name? Ah, uh, Miguel. <laughs> ah, well, too late. She's never going to see him again. Or any boy, for that matter. <sighs> yes, he did, Simone. That's why he went to go get help for me, and he's not looking for her. That proves that deep down, he cares a lot more about me. No, I didn't tell him I have my cell phone. Look, if Charity wanted to stay in Harmony, she wouldn't have left the hospital, right? So what's the point in looking for her? I mean, she's long gone by now. 
Simone, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Okay. I found us a lift to the hospital. Hi. Lucky for you, I was just heading back to the farm. My style won first prize at the county fair. Congratulations. How's your leg? Let me help you out. Think with that leg, you ought to ride in the back with Betty Lou. Who's Betty Lou? My sow. A pig? But she's real gentle. Uh, no thanks. I think I'll ride in the front with Miguel. She's right. You could stretch your leg out more in the back. But I don't think... Best, best get moving. Betty Lou gets a bit, well, upset if she misses her evening feed. <laughs> don't we all? Come on. You know, just because someone has money doesn't mean they can't sympathize with someone who doesn't. Hey, I'm not looking for your sympathy here. All I'm saying is that rich people like Ukraines have no idea what an extra hundred dollars a week means to real work people. That is not true. Oh, isn't it? How much did that sweater cost you? I don't remember. Of course you don't. You spend money without even thinking about it. You know, that's unfair. My family has worked very hard for their money. Most wealthy people I know have. It's not... Are we supposed to apologize because we have money? It's not about the money. It's what it does to you. It's your values. Oh, now you're saying that rich people don't have any values? I'm saying that your values are different, that's all. It, that's why it always makes me laugh when people say that the rich and poor can mix. Be friends. Even marry. It just doesn't work. Why not? Why can't love, real love, transcend economics? Okay. Let's say that a wealthy woman falls in love with a regular guy. You know, like a, a plumber or a mechanic. I mean, first of all, what are they going to talk about? What do they have in common? Well, it depends on the man. And where are they going to live? I mean, what is she going to trade in her mansion on the hill for some one-bedroom walk-up on the wrong side of town? Why should she if she can have better? You know, the days of the man paying for everything are long gone. <laughs> okay. So she pays for the mortgage. She pays for the ski trip, the luxury car, the jewelry, the expensive clothes. I mean, what's he going to pay for? Well, what's important is that he shows her emotional support, that he shows her love. <laughs> Get real. I don't care how politically incorrect it sounds. I mean, a woman's going to have no respect for a man like that in the long run. Would you? Well... A man's got to feel like he's providing for his family, doing his share. I mean, he wants to protect them. Call me old-fashioned, but that's the way I feel. Okay, what about a rich man and a poor woman? Basically the same thing. <sighs> That's ridiculous. And it goes against everything you just said. Certainly, a wealthy man can provide for his family. I mean, just think how much better off your sister Teresa would be if she married a rich man. Oh, would she? Or would people just say that she married him for the money? I mean, would his friends and his family look down on her, ignore her, say mean things about her because they don't think that she's as good as they are. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. But chances are that it would be. Now, Teresa deserves better than that. Now, I want what's best for her. I want her to have a nice home, to be able to not have to struggle, living from paycheck to paycheck. But the most important thing is she has a man that she can build her life with together. With someone who understands her, where she comes from. I'm mean, someone who loves and values her, not for what she has, but for who she is. A good person with a beautiful spirit and a beautiful heart. And I would never allow that sweet, beautiful heart to be broken by a bunch of rich, arrogant snobs. No, in fact, I don't want anyone in my family involved with people like the Cranes. Well, you're one to talk, because your mother works for my family. Yeah, and she's the only one who does. And I hope not for long. What about Teresa? What about Teresa? Hot pink. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Oh, it would go perfectly with your complexion. You have such lovely skin. 
Why, thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. We really must be going, Priscilla. It was a pleasure to meet you, Teresa. Thank you. We really must have lunch one day at the country club. Oh, I'd like that, Mrs. Dunlap. Priscilla, please. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. George. You really charmed Mrs. Dunlap, and she's not a woman easily charmed. I'm having such a great time, Ethan. I'm glad. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Would you like something to drink? Um, please, a uh, soda. I'll be right back. Thanks. I know that's Ethan Crane, but what is your name? Um, Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald. These photos are going to be in the Harmony Herald. I needed both your names for the caption. Thank you. My picture's going to be in the paper. Just like a real death. Oh, this is too amazing. All my friends will see me, my family. Oh. Oh, this is wrong, Ethan. I can't let that happen. Something wrong, Teresa? Oh, yeah, it could be worse. Me. I'll see you later, Kay. Where are you going? Charity's house is near here. I'm going to go check it out, see if she's there. I'll take you on to the hospital. No, Miguel, I want to go with you. What's your leg? I'll manage. You're in pain. I can handle it. Look, we need to find Charity, and you can't do it alone. She's scared of you, remember? Well, she doesn't know who I am. You're right. I mean, if she sees me, she could run off again. Well, I need to be there. Thanks for doing this, Kay. You're an amazing friend. Whatever I can do to help. Thanks for the ride. Sure. You can't let Miguel find Charity. That just gave Charity most of the strong cancer. She hasn't woken up once. And she's not going to wake up ever. You know what tells her? <sighs> well, I suppose we'll carry her back to the car, take her back to town, and then figure out how to get rid of her there. Mm. What can we get for you on foot? A worker ant has more stamina than you, Timmy. <laughs> Get it out, princess. Cut what out? Stop kissing my hand. I'm not touching you. Uh, vibrating? What about Teresa? What about uh, Teresa? She got Martin? herself a part-time job. She got all on her own. And she'll never have to work for the Cranes. Besides, I would never allow it. Ever. I see. Oh, Pastor Joe. I'll be right over. Someone reported seeing a person meeting the mugger's description near the opera house. There's a ballet going on there tonight. I'm going to check it out. You can't drive with that head injury. You could pass out at the wheels. I'm fine. See, I told you so. Look, this could be the high-profile case that I need to make detective. Well, at least let me drive you. But you already messed things up once tonight. Do you want that promotion or not? All right. Well, let's get going. Try not to get in any car wrecks on the way. What's wrong, Teresa? The photographer who took our picture. He's going to put it in the paper. Oh, it's a nuisance, but I'm getting used to it. No, you don't understand. Everyone will know that I was with you tonight. <laughs> Is something bad about that? No, it's just that my brother will throw a fit. He doesn't even know I'm working for your mother. She'd never allow it. He, he doesn't like your family very much. That's putting it mildly. I've had my run-ins with your brother, Luis, and so have several members of my family. He's made it quite clear he hates the cranes. Oh, if Luis finds out I've been working for your family, 
even worse that I've been out with you? Oh, my. Oh. I don't want to cause you any trouble. I'll go talk to the photographer, see if I can get the pictures back. I'd rather you not publish those pictures you took of us. Would you mind giving me that roll of film? <laughs> yes, I'd mind. This photo belongs to me. I'm going to print it. Charity's not here. That's too bad. Well, let's go. I wish I knew where she was. I'm worried about her. I mean, she's wandering around in her condition. She could have gone anywhere. We might never find her. Why don't we go back to Harmony? Maybe my dad has some news at the police station. Maybe. Okay, we'll head back. Charity, where are you? picture of him and that girl in the paper. Good thing I just reloaded before he came over for the film. I want a closer look at that photo. There. Now Luis will never see a picture of us. Thank you, Ethan. Luis would have gotten crazy if he had saw a picture of us together. Well, he'll never know you here with me tonight. Come on, let's enjoy the rest of the party. I didn't pass out walking in here. So you can go home now, okay? You're welcome. What? Oh, for the ride? Thanks. At least I got here in one piece. You know, your driving seems to have improved. Look, I'm going to go take a look around. See if there's anything to that report about the mother who attacked you being seen around here. Crane. 